everybody, welcome to Philo Dreams on NCBN TT. I'm Steve David and I'm your host. Today I have a very special guest, no stranger to uh, Philo Dreams and no stranger to Trinidad and Tobago football. Let me introduce you to Mariri Gonzalez. Welcome to Set Mariri. Thank you very much, Steve, and Field of Dreams entire viewing population. I appreciate being here. Thank you so kindly. Okay, Mariri is the president of the secondary schools football league. And uh, um, you guys, Mariri, everything you touch mm -hmm. turn into gold. <laughs> so this is the second year and it's getting better. Um, so let's remind the viewers a little bit. Let's talk, reminisce a little bit about last season. So they, they remember what happened last season. And then we will get them um, going with this season, what we plan to do. Well, I thank you so kindly for the compliment in the context of the SSFL being an entity that is considered a responsible one and professional mm -hmm. one. I'm very honored and pleased to be president of such a very esteemed organization. Congratulations to all those who would have served in the past. Having said that, we want to also bring to the table that we are ex extremely fortunate and privileged to be celebrating the 60th anniversary this year. Yeah. So a lot of things are in place for the honoring of such a very valuable milestone. Having said that, last season was quite a very successful one, both for the boys and the girls, and credit to the entire membership for working towards ensuring that we had a very successful one. It does not in any way take away from the fact that there is always room for improvement, because we had a few areas inclusive of the delayed Big Five boys mm -hmm. and the Big Five girls, but more importantly, the Big Five boys, because of the disciplinary matters that were pending and we eventually came to that decision. It was the only time we actually played SSFL in the month of January, February. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, but we wanted to ensure too that we had all the necessary protocols observed and respected and recognizing that we fell short, of which we initially, and I would want to repeat here again, we do apologize for any inconvenience, cause and discomfort. But having said that, barring that and possibly a few indiscipline here and there, which we try to clamp down as much as possible on because SSFL in no uh, way whatsoever condones indiscipline, by the schools, by those who are supporters of the SSFL, since it's a school competition and therefore in our constitution and the guidelines, the schools are held with the responsibility of their home supporters. There are areas where they can be reprimanded or fined accordingly. We really don't want to go down that road of penalties, mm -hmm. but we have that in place in the event that we have to utilize it. I want to also recognize too for last season that the gap is closing and that is good. And I say gap closing in the context of the competition among the various schools, not only at the premiership level, but at the championship girls and boys and also at the lower divisions. I want to recognize and identify a particular school, not for want of any way being favor, favor, favored or, or being fa in any way favoring. But the school in the East Hillview College in particular, mm -hmm. doing a lot of ground work, like some other schools too, at the Republic Bank National Youth Football League tournament uh, for the 2023 season, mm -hmm. and even before that 2022. And now they have the distinction of moving up into the championship in the E zone. So that is just one out of several schools that we need to credit mm -hmm. for the consistency and the uh, uh, improvement. In the SSFL Premiership Division, 
we went down apparently to the last, the second to last league game to determine the premiership winner. Yeah. And when that happens, it's indicative that the competition is high is a high high level one, one that is really tremendously exciting, one that brings the best out of the schools mm -hmm. through their student athletes. And to that we want to credit the schools from the principals down to those of the technical staff for the support, the encouragement, even the parents and other family members. I want to also acknowledge the coaches that we have on board. We are very, very fortunate to have some of the most distinguished, competent, talented and gifted coaches in the country now returning to the SSFL and I speak about a few. Uh, you have uh, Hudson Charles, mm -hmm. um, Cooper from Presentation College, Baba Charles mm -hmm. from Fatima. I'm very happy to say that we also now have uh, Randolph Boyce, mm -hmm. coach of St. Benedict's College, who is now being honored and given the privilege of being the national mm -hmm. under 20 coach. Mm -hmm. When that happens, and I mean prior to that, we had Angus Eve, who served credibly well mm -hmm. as senior coach of the national team and uh, once reigned supreme with Naparima College, won, winning the most titles at the premiership. So it shows that the quality that we have, it is being recognized by TTFA. And we want to also commend Mr. Kieran Edwards and his entire slate uh, for the victory with all respect to the other slate led by Mr. Colin Wolf, who I am sure would also would have done a good job too, but who is in position right now is Kieran Edwards and his team. And we are working closely in collaboration with them to ensure that together we can move forward and continue to make a credible, respectable and positive holistic development and advancement of our student athletes. We just came out of the girls, the CONCACAF girls under 15, mm -hmm. which we performed creditably well in the context of taking the third place position. The boys under 14 CFU, Caribbean Football Union, just concluded yesterday, which is our Sunday, the 25th, which happened to be my birthday. <laughs> and uh, they fell short uh, by losing against French Guyana. So while I'm saying the gap is closing, at the SSFL level, the gap is also closing at the Caribbean level. And Trinidad and Tobago really needs to ensure that the position and reputation that we had before, the countries are getting very close to us and it's about us now digging deep. Mm -hmm. Because we have the resources, I am personally uh, of that belief. We have the persons to do it. It's just about working in a very collective way to ensure that the players, by extension, more importantly, reap the rewards from all of our efforts. It's interesting to know that and um, you, you just woke me up the, mm -hmm. the 60-year anniversary. Yes. Uh, uh, and that is a milestone. And that is the... in. 1964 That's is the first year the actual colleges league mm -hmm. started with the three teams in the north and the yeah. three teams in the <laughs> south. Uh, I know that because that yes. was the year, first year when I went to Saint College. Yes. So I knew about it. So that's good. Um, so we should have some kind of celebration, and this is a good year for it because mm -hmm. I think you're gonna do you're gonna out of this world. I think you guys mm -hmm. are gonna do well because your players when that's playing in the premier league now mm -hmm. is doing excellent and i'm looking I, I because that's where my hunting ground is going to be mm -hmm. secondary schools to help my team build so we really appreciate you for stepping up your game and, and giving us all we can handle one of the things david that 
we would like to see materialize. Mm -hmm. We have not done it as yet. It's on the front burner. The financial support is critically important in this exercise mm -hmm. that I'm going to share now, which is have the Premiership Girls yeah. competition. Right. Uh, we were just on the verge of doing it. And then COVID came in and created some disruption. So now we're trying to resurface, revamp, re-engage the various stakeholders. I would say, and we have the launch coming up, the SSFL Sportsmark launch at most likely the Bricks Hotel in St. Anne's on Wednesday, mm -hmm. the 28th of August. And one of the areas of concern that we will be highlighting is that of the girls' premiership. But what we have looking rather encouraging, while we may be unable to have established it, why would have liked to do it for the 60th anniversary? We do have, and not to take the cat out of the bag right now, one of the ambitious and exciting sponsors who is going to take a part of the girls' championship, sponsor it, the Big Five, and their intention in wetting their feet figuratively is to come 2025, be the one that will be given first preference for the sponsorship of the girls' premiership. I say that because the girls are, are important as the boys. FIFA has been advocating for the longest while that the future of football is feminine. Not in any gender bias way, but to show that what the males can do, the girls can also do it. We are very fortunate in this part of the world, CONCACAF, to be precise. The Americans are one of the leaders in world football. I'm talking about the female team, mm -hmm. with all due respect to the men team. We saw what they did in the, in the recently concluded Olympics. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, USA and Canada remains one of the two countries where a number of our student athletes saw scholarship and still continue to. So we want to encourage, we want to support the girls and the boys, but in this case the girls, to pursue their dreams for those who wish to at the scholastic level and for those who wish to go professional like Akila Molan. Uh, just to mention a few, even now we have uh, Johnson, who is now playing in, I believe it's Sweden, got a left back at the national senior team, who came back quite recently to spend some holidays right here in Trinidad, that the openings are there, the opportunities are there. And that's what I want to say, that opportunities will always be there, mm -hmm. student athletes. Just make sure and be ready right. so that when the opportunities come yes. your way, you can't afford to say you weren't given the chances. So it's about the five Ps. Proper planning prevents poor performance. So as long as you plan well, you prepare well, and the opportunities come, hey, it's there for the taking. Yes. And I'm yes. sure opportunities will continue to come mm -hmm. as they are coming right now for all and sundry. Right. I, I think if, if we have a TTPF woman, mm -hmm. I think secondary school girls is going to dominate that. Uh, because I don't think there's too many clubs out there mm -hmm. who can, can uh, support that. So if they ever do that, I think you have a fluctuation of... And as you, as you quite rightly mentioned that, I want to really congratulate Ms. Mora, mm -hmm. recently elected as the president of the Wolf TT and her new executive. I believe they will take the baton mm -hmm. and carry it to the next level, which is a higher level. They're working closely in conjunction with the present executive, Kieran Edwards. I think they, are, they have also exercised great wisdom. Mm -hmm in not starting the Wolf TT at this point in time, seeing that they had some constraints within the earlier part of 2024 to conclude the 2023 season. Mm -hmm. 
And I say that because almost about 70% of their players are student athletes in yeah. the school. Mm -hmm. And we would like these female athletes, student athletes, to be able to play for their clubs as well as play for their schools. Mm -hmm. So with the expectation, with a delay, seasonal start by Wolf TT, which most likely will be late November into yeah. December or even January, it affords now these student athletes, the females, to play in the schools and to now continue mm -hmm. playing at their clubs, which is what we want. Now, I want to say this categorically clear because sometimes it could be perceived as a misconception. The secondary school football league does not, has not, and will not in any way debar any player from playing for their clubs. Right. They are entitled to play for their clubs, their academies, or for their schools, or all three, mm -hmm. if they are in all three. However, for the SSFL, because we have insurance on all the players, including the females, mm -hmm. we think it is imperative and it's only astute of us that in the event not mm -hmm. wishing it happens, that you get injured, then we now have to embark on utilizing the insurance that we have put in place to assist you. If you are now to be playing for a club or academy, while you're engaged in the SSFL and you were to get injured, I think it's only unfair mm -hmm. that we cover that. And that's the only reason. Uh, as a matter of fact, a player, male or female, can continue playing for their clubs into September, into October, even November. Mm -hmm. And they can maybe uh, play the first game for their school. Mm -hmm in the last two weeks in November, and it's up to them. But the minute you play your first game right. for the SSFL, it means that you have now given up your rights to play for your club. It's when we start talking, we lose track of time. Mm -hmm. So we need to take a break. Sure. <laughs> um, as soon as we come back, we pick up where we left off. Really we will be right back after a short break. Hi, I am Nigel Coutier. Hi. I'm Jemima Joseph. And I'm Jovan Paul Edmund. We are coming to a community near you. We're going to speak community, community talk. We want to hear your issues, your concerns, or what will improve your community. Look out for us. We'll be coming soon, Nigel and myself, to your community to hear in whatever way we can do to improve your environment, be it employment, infrastructure, anything to improve your living as well as our own. Catch us on NCDN TV Television for Community Talk.
Okay, viewers, welcome back. Uh, for the ones not tuning in, you're looking at Field of Dreams on NCBNTT. We have with us today Mariri Gonzalez, who is the president of the Trinidad and Tobago um, Secondary Schools Football League. Um, Mariri, as uh, we were talking, um, I know you guys planning something for the 60th anniversary. Yes. Do you want to share or you just want to hold it until that time comes? I guess what I'll do is uh, just give a synopsis. Okay. And we'll hold on the specifics. Uh, we will be celebrating it in grand style, uh, somewhere around the, maybe the middle of the season, if not the final third. Mm -hmm. uh, the intention is to acknowledge a number of individuals who would have served in the SSFL over the years. If you could recall in the 50th anniversary, that one was also a special one mm -hmm. because you were one of the persons, I believe, also who was recognized along with uh, uh, Warren Archibald and, uh, Everett, Cummins, and Everett Cummins, et cetera. Uh, the Leon, mm -hmm. yeah, and others like that for the service that you would have rendered uh, over the many years. So along a similar line, and for those administratively, and for those players, etc., who would have excelled, and also recognition of some other individuals, miscellaneous and otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, that will be acknowledged again, all for service that they would have rendered, for the valuable input that they would have done, for the continued support of the SSFL. So with this 60th anniversary, we will be having it in such a way to ensure that no stone, stone is left unturned to certainly recognize those who de definitely need to be uh, put on the podium for the excellent work that he would have done over the years with the SSFL. If I, if I may suggest, right, in like the fifth year, you, you, re you recognize the players who started this. Mm -hmm. Uh, 50 years 50 years ago no it's six years ago mm -hmm. so instead of going to <laughs> those you got to come down to yeah, yeah, yeah. the ones who mm -hmm. who um, come after them what we'll look at yeah. is possibly within the last 10 years right seeing that we have already covered those for the first 50 right so those who are great achievers mm -hmm. standouts mm -hmm. within the last decade those are the ones in particular right. who will be brought to the forefront and uh, rewarded for the efforts exactly yeah. yeah and we look forward to that all right so tell us a little bit about some plans for this year mm -hmm. um is it anything new um uh, uh, how are we going to improve the process because it's, it's a tall order to improve yeah. what you did last year one of the areas that was a sour grape using such a term to describe part of the season was the same very big five that I spoke about, mm -hmm. uh, that we need to have done some serious introspective work on it. So the intention for 2024 is to re-engage, revamp, uh, reshuffle, reorganize the machinery for the registration, which right now presently is it's, uh, it's, uh, in transition mode. It's uh, the registration actually is in pro progress at this time, uh, especially for the premiership division, uh, certainly also inclusive of the other divisions. Uh, more meticulous work will be done to ensure, and we have done that over the many years. Mm -hmm. It's just that this one slipped through the crack for 2023, and we, we felt the hurt and the pain from it. And to that, we apologize for the discomfort, especially to the schools that were involved. But something of such an idea, one should not have happened. And we'll put all things in place to ensure that it doesn't repeat itself. Outside of that, we just want to remind all the schools categorically clear that we really have very much enthused, excited, of the great support of those schools that are in the various 
uh, divisions and most of the premiership and championship. And while we know that football is a part of it is a highly emotional event and passion can take the better part of us, that there is some level of control with one's behavior. Mm -hmm. So running onto the field of play without the referee's permission is not acceptable uh, unless for un unless for authorized persons. So we did have one or two incidents where adults, parents, guardians were having some altercations with players, minor, mm -hmm. but it's better to nip these things early in the bud so that they don't in any way become uh, in an exaggerated way and blow out of proportion. So we are reminding more or less uh, all those who are involved, the stakeholders, in particular the supporters, love the game. We appreciate your support. You have your role to play and allow the student at least to do their, their thing and allow the, the match officials also to perform their responsibility and their duty mm -hmm. and the teams through their coaches to also do their tactical, strategic maneuvering of, 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 of their coaching and the administrators through the schools to do what is necessary to get the players to the forefront. One of the other areas that we were looking forward to for the this season as we celebrate in the 60th anniversary is that one of the sponsors in particular more of that will be said very soon. It will be embarking on a special program in the schools to highlight some of the most outstanding players from the zone and just possibly to start with the top 10, which we have five zones. So the top male and female in each zone, but more will be said about that. And it's a good direction to take because they are recognizing the great achievers. Why? Because we simply have some players, student athletes, who have been performing so creditably well by even attaining at this tender age national caps, mm -hmm. either for the under 17, under 20. And look at Shaves from Fatima. Mm -hmm. He got his lone senior cap before, unfortunately, he was injured. Uh, in that tier two game in Matura, playing for Queen's Park, even though he still also attained the MVP award, male, congratulations to him, Angelus Alexander uh, from Scarborough Secondary, doing a double, back to back, retaining that crown that she won in 2022. Uh, so, that being said, and I can only mention, I can mention those and several others, um, Josiah Ochoa from St. Mary's College, mm -hmm. captain of the national under-17 team. Uh, we could go on and on with a number of players. So with, with, with that being said, we want to recognize that doing their homework, putting in the hard work, respecting and addressing the concerns made by their coaches, and other members of the technical staff and guided by the school and their parents. A lot of opportunities are there for them. And therefore, we know that we will have a highly entertaining, competitive, and I pray God, and no an injury free and an accident free 2024. But a lot of a lot are in store, uh, in store, I should say for the players, the student athletes. And I want to also share too, just up to this morning, I got a call from a reputable institution, not to call a country, mm -hmm. but to let, let us know that they eagerly awaiting full scholarship, a goalkeeper, a male in this case, and also looking for a female midfielder. This is an, a university 
Full scholarship with all areas covered, all expenses taken care of. They must have at least four CSEC or ordinary subjects. You don't need to have had any advances yet. Mm -hmm. They're also saying that you don't even need to have an SAT score. Uh, so they're looking for that, but they need the information as soon as possible. They're also indicating that a video clip on each player will will assist tremendously. And with that being said, again, a very noteworthy reminder. Don't wait until you reach Form 4 and Form 5 to create your videos, which will be part of your resume, right. student athletes mm -hmm. and coaches and parents. Make sure that it is being done as you're going through these stages while playing for your school. What I would like to see happen as the president is this, and I hope, trust, with the, that drive that we'll be able to have it, the tangible part of it in place very soon is that any player, let me say Steve David, mm -hmm. coming into a school at Form 1 level and his dream or his aspiration is to be successful in acquiring a school scholarship or a football scholarship or in a case where he or she may wish to go after a professional contract Mm -hmm. There are steps that we will put in place to let you know these are the terms and conditions, these are the requirements, these are the, this, these are the procedures to follow. So when you reach Form 4, Form 5, you're not scratching your head and wondering what's next to be done. You'll have already know what to do and put it in place. So it me means it will put you in good stead to acquire scholarships easier. Now, may I say in the same breath too, Mm -hmm. the standard of the football is improving daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. The rivalry is also stepping up to the upper level. Getting scholarships, while it may appear to be easier for male and female in the regional and international circuit like Canada and the U.S., there are also students who are attending high school in the U.S. and in Canada mm -hmm. who are also looking to source same scholarships too. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the competition for scholarships for those who are desirous is very, very competitive. We saw quite recently with the CFU boys under 14. I was very privileged to be at the Hazel Crawford Stadium to see Bermuda playing, uh, I believe it's, can't recall right now, but Bermuda, um, they were playing the opponents and the quality of football that they were playing and that's just under 14. Good synergy, good understanding, ball possession, etc., like that. And they are only 14 years of age, and that's a country within the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. uh, not to take away from Jamaica, which we want to applaud and congratulate uh, for winning the CFU, uh, boys under 14. And Jamaica, by and large, now is also open up, open up its doors to through the GC Foster, uh, which are highly promoting the physical education program and uh, the college, the Jamaica College for accepting student athletes from Trinidad and Tobago now in football and in track and field, just to mention right. two very important sporting discipline. Trinidad and Tobago through UTT is doing its work and through UE, always room for improvement and should reach a point now where the level should be improve and increase at the UTT level. So those who do wish to maybe live and study on the outside could have the advantage of staying home mm 
and still get scholarships right here at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm not talking about just partial. I'm talking about full scholarships at the UTT as well as the University of the West Indies. By doing that, by also or structure, creating the structure and the philosophy that we need to be able to have an identification mm -hmm. to play by and to play with so that all the coaches on board, those at the uh, elite program level, those at the grassroots level, those at the elite level, at the national level, and those within the school will know that Trinidad and Tobago is the philosophy we're working by. Mm -hmm. And therefore, by doing such, I know fully well the SSFL as a contributor will continue, continue to, doing, to do what is necessary to assist with the holistic uh, development and advancement of the players uh, so that they could showcase their talent in a very prolific way at the national level. Right. I like the idea about recognizing the players like what is going to be like a monthly player at the or player of the month or, or something like that or weekly. How are you going to do that? As we are embarking on it for the first time, mm -hmm. what we will do is most likely <clears throat> But the intention is mm -hmm. to look at your performance on the field of play and also look at your academic performance, right. your consistency, right. maintaining a certain percentage in the school mm -hmm. over the September, October month and possibly part of November. So it's going to be a beautiful marriage between the academic and your ability to play the game of football, which we know is expected for any student athlete who is moving in the direction of acquiring a football scholarship or for those who wish to go pro. That with that, we know already schools are doing it, but the SSFL want to even further uh, support such an initiative and acknowledge those student athletes who are great achievers along that pathway. I tell you what, if we can if we can do something to recognize them as well, bring them on the show or something, we would um, be happy to do that. And we need to take a break now though. When we come back, we would get into, um, I want us to talk a little bit about um, how we keep the balance geographically mm -hmm. with, with what, 14 teams? 16. 16. Yeah, at the Premiership. Using, yeah. Okay, viewers will be right back after the short break. Change on TV, tell us I'm with a snake on me, cool. Welcome to another edition of Saturday Sports on NCBN TV Television. We are on every Saturday evening at 8 p.m. where we talk sports. Nigel. Quote me today is your daily motivational segment. To start your day right, join me Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. right here on NCBN. Remember, wake up with a smile. Today is your day. 
Okay, welcome back, viewers. Okay, Marie, um, you are such a genius at everything that you do. And this one is going to be a brain teaser for mm -hmm. you uh, because you don't have control yes. over geographically controlling how things sway. Mm -hmm. But I know you can do it if it ever happens. So because back in the day in, six, in 64, they had three North teams and mm -hmm. three South teams. Yes. And intercall was between the South teams play, the North teams play, and then boom, the finals. Now we have 16 premium teams. Yes. So this is, this could become a problem. Right now it's not really, but it could become a problem. So I, I with your genius brain and, and expertise, how do you think you can control that? You use a word there. It's a very potent word. Control. Right. What is within one control? So there are things that are controllables mm -hmm. and there are things out of the control mm -hmm. of the SSFL. In the context of this, administratively right now, we have rules and regulation and guidelines concerning the premiership division of the top 16. Mm -hmm. It's a qualification. It's a promotion right, and right. a demotion. So to be able to reach there, it doesn't matter what zone you are from, right. you have the opportunity to reach the premiership division. Mm -hmm. So it's a ding-dong, I wouldn't say dog, bat, eat battle. But it's a ding-dong battle to reach there. And this puts the various zones at a position where you have to lift your game. Right. You have to lift your standard. And it's a challenge for them and I mean bragging rights among many others to see which zone will be the better one or which coach or which school healthy rivalry continues among the SSFL membership and that's good. What we need to do and what the members need to understand is this while we have while we would like to see equality which is rather difficult to attain we could at least put on the table equity across the board by allowing all the schools to have a starting point or a base which means the resources afforded from mm -hmm. and provided by the ssfl all 16 teams are provided in it from the beginning prior to the season what is happening right now and is quite evident is that some of the schools because of the exceptionally strong alumni mm -hmm. that they have in place and are very effective, efficient, and have a potent contribution that they are making to the school and to the football team, this is where some are having a slight advantage over the others. Now, what we also could uh, see in this scenario is the poaching of players which is something that uh, happens all over the world mm -hmm. and even here in Trinidad and Tobago. But poaching can be not totally eradicated, but it can be diminished. How? Ensuring, not to call any particular school, but school A and school B. If school A players, player or players, is being poached on to come to school B, because school B has a number of various 
entities or, or benefits that that player from school A uh, does not have over in school A, he or she with the consent and permission of the parents and guardian move to school B. What school A needs to do? They need to also lift the, uh, the auntie and say, okay, the reason why you would have gone across the school B is because these things have attracted you. So we need to make sure and put the same systems, same incentives, same benefits in place. So before the child consider or even thinks about moving, they will already be in a comfortable space where they will feel honored privilege and have that level of loyalty to play for their school. Now that doesn't in any way still take away the right of any child through the Ministry of Education, which we fall under, uh, to move from one school to the next as long as they fit the requirements. And by the way, I want to applaud the patron of the league, which in this case is the Minister of Education, Dr. Nyan Gatsby Dolly, for the continuous support to the SSFL and also our Chief Ambassador, being Shaka Hislop. Uh, always very much in support of the SSFL. So to return about to that topic about uh, uh, the equity and equality is about ensuring that that is handling a very meticulous and a very strategically astute way so that while you will still have schools that may still invariably have a little more than the others, that there will not be a high level of disparity. And by doing such, it means, even while I would have mentioned earlier on, that the gaps are closing. So if the gaps are closing, in spite of the great disparity, you can imagine what could happen now when all 16 schools, just to mention the Premiership Division, where all are exposed to the same amount of resources. I want to also credit, because, you know, we look at the premiership, and the perception is, when we hear SSFL, you know, persons say, well, the intercal, they classify everything as the intercal. Right. But we have a, a league right. that runs for almost two months plus. Mm -hmm. And the league reminds me of test cricket. You know, you, you need to have that level of sustainability patience because you endure it to the end. Uh, the Coca-Cola, which is the, is the sponsor for the Intercol, uh, come like the T20. You know, it's knockout. You've got to survive to stay in to move to the next level. But I think in, 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 in view of that, the, the, the teams need to be applauded for what they're doing there and those involved with them. The championship division, the senior division, the boys under 16, the girls under 15, the boys under 14, the boys under 13, form 1, 13 and under. And this year, something that we wanted to start last year, we're going to start this year with the girls 13 and under. But this time around, unlike the boys who are supposed to be in form 1 as a criteria, the girls, in order to encourage more of them to play, they don't necessarily have to be in Form 1, but as long as they are 13 years and under, Form 2, Form 3, they can play. So that definitely will embark on for 2024 season. But at the end of it, it's about creating yet this much anticipated platform. I'm very pleased and honored, and I really commend the predecessors and the previous executives, etc., for doing all the ground work. And all I'm doing now as the president is to hold on to the battle and run with my leg to the best mm -hmm. that can be done. But on the staple of football in Trent Tobago, SSFL remains uh, one of the most and much anticipated football in the country. We don't want to drop the standard. We want to just carry it to the next level so that Trinidad and Tobago will create footballers and citizens who will represent the red, white, and black with distinction. Yeah, I always compare our programs with the U.S. 
Mm -hmm. and, and in the U.S., of course, they have um, different zones and, and then they compete and, until they get to the mm -hmm. final. And that's a lot more football than we have. But at least um, we have some competition going. And when that time comes, of course, we can figure it out, whether we yes. need to split to keep the balance or whatever, whatever. But uh, uh, I think I think it's the competition, like you said, is so keen mm -hmm. now with with at least six or eight schools. And not even that. I mean, some schools at the bottom uh, they catch themselves at the end of the mm -hmm. season and they beat schools on the top and up, up, upset the upper guard, especially when my St. Benedict's College <laughs> lose early <laughs> and they had a late comeback, like <sighs> <the> big <laughs> boss in the race. You know, I, I've got to say, I mean, <sighs> uh, but it is, it is good competition. You guys are doing such an excellent job. And, and I think um, what's going to happen, and it's happening already, like it did in the U.S., the attendance, the mm -hmm. crowds that come to the game yeah. is not is overtaken. I've overtaken our premier mm -hmm. football league, and that needs to continue and, you know, and, and keep going. And I think yeah. That's what makes you guys so good. And I'm sure that the, the TTFA, through its premiership division, the TTPFL Tier 1 right. and Tier 2, will continue to work towards the marketability of uh, bringing out the crowds with having incentives, etc., like that. Uh, we want to continue at the SSFL level to do that. Now, we already have a base by which to start with, which is the schools. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm glad you mentioned that. We are in a predicament presently. Uh, why do I say that? Because sports marks that is our uh, chief broadcast mm -hmm. thin entity that uh, has been doing a fantastic job for us and for Trent Tobago football would like to have double headers. We would love to have double headers too. Double headers mean that greater crowds. Mm -hmm. Greater opportunities for more games and more players to be seen on the big screen mm -hmm. to create resumes, video, uh, their video clips for resumes. All right, they'll be going at the global level. All right, just to mention a few benefits. We would like to do that at a point in time where when the teams are playing, students are still not in school. Yeah. To do that, we need to play games a little later on. So, for example, four and six. Mm -hmm. But there are some of these stadia without lights. And I think we know which stadia they are. To play the double headers, we'll have to play two and four. Playing at two, students are still at school. Yeah, the parents and guardians are still at school. They want to see their loved ones play. Mm -hmm. they, want, they want to support them. So mm -hmm. we are really employing and eagerly pleading on the authorities that be. Uh, I know that there may be constraints along the way, political and otherwise. Uh, as long as we can get all of these venues, especially the stadia, up to par, readily available, then it will be even more beneficial to all and sundry. We would like to have our opening uh, that will take place on Friday. That's next week, Friday. Um, after the launch this coming Wednesday, we tentatively have Atto Boland Stadium. Some refurbishment was done on it. We are hoping and keeping our fingers crossed that Ato will be ready for that SSFL NGC mm -hmm. Super Cup exhibition game between St. Benedict's College, uh, sorry, not St. Benedict's College, uh, Fatima College, the league winners, and Presentation College San Fernando, the Intercol winners. 
uh, we are hopeful. If not, we don't get a venue, we'll have to find another one. Uh, it's central, so it helps. Now, we have also some logistical issues concerning traffic, playing a four o'clock game uh, with some persons trying to reach the venue. Mm -hmm. Again, it becomes a factor. So, so there are many very important factors that they determine that uh, we may have to change uh, the venue. But I come back to say how it's important for us to have the double headers. Where we can have them, we will have them. Where we can't, we'll just have to go with the single games. The intention also was to, it was to have, and maybe we could still try, but can guarantee, was to have an, an opening double header with the girls' big five league winners. Big, not big five. The big five winners, which is the league winners, and the girls' intercal which in this case would have been Pleasantville Secondary. The Intercal was, uh, uh, was Intercal winners being Pleasantville and the league winners in the championship girls being Scarborough Secondary. So that we could have had one game, girls game first, but again, the logistics with that two and four is uh, creating some tremendous discomfort there. But again, it's also about bringing the girls up and putting them on the platform like the boys to also allow them to know that they are part and parcel of the journey that we are taking along the way with it. Yeah. You know, also, um, they can pre broadcast one, they can tape one mm -hmm. and play it later on. Yeah. At least they, would, they can... I've, they've done that before. Yeah. You know, you go home and you sit, play a game and you go home and sit down and watch yourself play. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, it's a way of bridging that gap so, for double headers. But I understand totally what you're saying. We run out of time. I've got one minute. Uh, mm -hmm. Any closing remarks, invitation to the public to do the opening, whatever, whatever. Certainly, as we look forward to have the launch. Mm -hmm on Wednesday the 28th of August at mm -hmm. the Briggs Hotel. There's going to be an SSFL Sports Max launch. Mm -hmm. uh, the various major stakeholders will be in attendance. We will be releasing a lot more information on that platform. Mm -hmm. We intend to also have next week Friday the exhibition game that is a much anticipated event which will be categorized as the SSFL NGC Super Cup between the presentation called San Fernando South and Fatima the, the league winners and then the season commences the following Wednesday on the 11th of September the premiership and then as we move into the month of September, the various other divisions, the championship, senior division, other low divisions will start. We're looking forward for your, the public's total support as they have done over the years. Mm -hmm. We are entrusting uh, that through the players and schools, more improved and quality football will be established. And we look forward to also have a bumper affair for this 60th anniversary. And we ask in person, just be on standby. SSFL is coming to release another bumper affair. Very, I so I'm so happy I'm, I'm glad that uh, we got you here today. Um, it's always a pleasure and it's always interesting when you come on the set. I thank you so much for for your support. I thank you so much for the SSFL because you've done such a great job and continued success. Thank you very much, Steve David, for having me yeah. on the Field of Dream once again. It's always a pleasure being here. Okay. Thank you once again. All right, viewers, thank you as well for tuning in every Tuesday night at 8. And we, we do appreciate you so much as well. Um, NCBNTT, thanks for the opportunity. And um, don't forget, we have a Facebook page. And um, you can check us out. And we have an email address, fieldofdreamstv at gmail.com, where you can drop us a line. This show has ended. Go in peace. I'm Steve David. That's Mariri Gonzalez 
see you next week. Good night.